Hello, learners. Welcome to the Junior High School R on the Joy Learning Channel. My name is Colin J. Mensa, and I'm taking you through the Information and Communications Technology, ICT. In today's lesson, we are looking at peripherals. Peripherals. And by the end of the lesson, you, the learner, will be able to define a peripheral and identify the components. Define a peripheral and identify the components. And you'll also be able to identify the components of the commonly used input devices. The commonly used input devices and their uses. Commonly used input devices and their uses. So when we say peripherals, we are talking about the physical components of a computer that are connected outside the system units. The physical components of a computer that are connected outside the system units. These devices are other than the basic hardware devices. We have the keyboard, we have the mouse, and we have the system. We have the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor. These devices, even though they are connected outside the system unit, make up the basic hardware components. So we're talking about those devices that are connected to the computer to enable it work or to make the user's work easy and faster. Then these components are grouped into three main groups. We have the input device, we have the output device, and then we have the storage device. Input device, output device, and the storage device. Today our focus will be on input device. Input device. When we say input, input is data entry into the computer. Input is data entry into the computer. So when we add the device and we say input device, we are talking about the devices that help to feed the computer with data. The device that helps to feed the computer with data. Let me say data. Data is raw facts. Data is raw facts. Data is raw facts. Then we have groups of data or the source of data. We have the primary source and the secondary source. Let's look at the components of data that are fed into the computer. Components of data that are fed into the computer. We have the audio data. Audio data. Then we have the image data. We have the video data and then the test data. All these data are fed into the computer with the help of an input device. Audio data can be in the form of sound, sound signals that are sent into the computer. Image data can refer to our pictures and our graphic that are sent into the computer. Video data can also be a moving test or a moving image that is sent into the computer, then the test data written or scanned document that are sent into the computer. Now look at our commonly used input devices. There are various forms of input devices and we are looking at the commonly used ones. Other ones are embedded in the three main commonly used input devices. We have the keyboards, we have the keyboards, we have pointing devices, pointing devices, and the source data entry device. Source data entry device. So we look first at the keyboard, the keyboard. A keyboard is a device that has keys as usual, and these keys help to enter data into the computer. The data here is the tests and other commands. 
can be tests, it can be numbers that are sent into the computer. The keyboard is the device that does that. It sends tests and it sends other commands into the computer. We have, the, we have some components or the features of a keyboard. We have a group on the keyboard which known the F1 to F12. Those ones are our function keys. Our function keys help to issue command into the computer. We also have the ones with the A to Z and then the 1 to 0 components of the keyboard known as the alpha numeric, the alpha numeric component of the keyboard. Then we also have uh, another portion that contains only the numbers. And this portion is referred to as the numeric keypad or the numeric section of the keyboard. Then we have the ones that has the arrow keys. It moves up, down, left, and right all these ones to make up the arrow keys or the cursor control keys. Then we also have the feature that has the control, the tab, the shift, the space bar. All these features too are called the special purpose keys. So we have five basic components of the keyboard. We have the function keys, we have the alpha numeric keys, we have the numeric keys, we also have the cursor control keys, and then the special purpose keys. Now look at the types of keyboard. Some types of keyboard, we have the, the standard keyboard, we have the ergonomic keyboard, we also have the wireless keyboard, then we have multimedia keyboard. Multimedia keyboard. The standard keyboard has a standard number of keys of 101 keys. 101 keys. These are the common keyboard we have in our computers or the common keyboard that are connected to our computers to use. Then we have the ergonomic keyboard. The ergonomic keyboard is the keyboard that is designed to reduce the stress we put on the hands when typing. It has been designed specially for our comfort, our comfort when typing. So we have the standard keyboard, then we have the ergonomic keyboard, then the wireless keyboard, as the name implies. Wireless, it is the type of keyboard that has no wires connected, but it has a sensor connected to your system unit that will be used to manipulate its movement. And then the Multimedia keyboard has the features like the pause, the play, fast forward, rewind. That makes it, that, that helps to watch or to manipulate your med media software when you are using it. Then we also have some common keyboard layouts. The common keyboard layout, we have the QWERTY layout. The QWERTY layout. The QWERTY layout because of the first six alphabetical keys on the keyboard. The first six alphabetical keys on the keyboard being K O W E R T Y, hence the name QWERTY keyboard or QWERTY layout. We also have the DOVAC, the DOVAC layout. The DOVAC layout was named after the inventor, after the name, after the inventor. Then somebody will say, then the inventor is called Duvac. No. The inventor of the keyboard is Christopher Shows. Christopher Shows invented the keyboard. Then we also have another layout known as the Coleman layout. The Coleman layout also helps in our typing activities. So we have these types of keyboard and they are layouts as well. Now, we look at the functions of the keyboard. The functions of the keyboard. We have the basic function used to enter text. We saw in the K 
key divisions when we are looking at the components that we have the alpha numeric key components of the keyboard. It is this alpha numeric component that helps us to enter tests. So the portion that has the the portion that has A to Z is a num alpha numeric portion that helps us to enter tests into the computer. Then we also used to enter commands using combinations. We also saw the function keys as F1 to F12. And it is this F1 to F12 or the function keys that help us to issue commands. And for the key combination part two, we saw the special purpose keys like the control and the shift. When we say combination, we are using these special purpose keys plus an alphabet or plus a number to carry out a command. That's the combination. Then it is used to enter the user's response. It is used to enter the user's response. If you are using the command prompt where the user or in the computer has its interactions, it is the keyboard that you use to enter your response for the computer to carry out the instruction. Another commonly used device is the pointing device. The pointing device. And the pointing device, as the name implies, is any device that is used to control the cursor or that is used to control the mouse pointer. Any device used to control the mouse pointer or the cursor on the computer screen is a pointing device. We have examples on our screen here. We have a mouse, a mouse being an example of a pointing device. A mouse is a handheld device as you are seeing on the screen and it controls the cursor. The mouse controls the cursor. As we said, a pointing device controls the cursor. We have the part of the mouse here. We have the left button. We have the right button. We have the left button. We have the right button. We have our cord. Then we have our scroll. Then we have the body or the belly of the mouse. We also have our trackball here. Our trackball, as you are seeing on the screen here, also controls the mouse pointer. Then we have a pointing stick, the red letter in between the red letter in between your keys on the keyboard is a pointing stick. As you move this red letter in the on, on the keys, it also controls the cursor. Then we have a joystick a joystick for our gamers, those who love to play games. The joystick will also help to control the cursor. Then we also have the touchpad. The touchpad helps to control the cursor. If you are using your laptop, touchpads are located on our laptop computers. And we have our touch screen. Our touch screen to help us to manipulate the data where we use our hands on the screens of our devices to carry out or to manipulate the cursor. Then we also have the light pen, the light pen or the stylus. The light pen, as I'm, I'm using here, helps me to direct the cursor on the screen. So we have our light pen that is helping me to manipulate data on the screen. So we have all these examples of pointing devices. We have our mouse, we have our trackball, we have our pointing stick, we have our joystick, we also have the touchpad, the touch screen, and the light pen as examples of pointing devices. So we have our first activity on our screen here. We have to identify the devices below. Identify the devices below from one to seven, from one to seven. So you take a snapshot quickly and then you identify the devices below. 
Good. Now let's look at functions of pointing devices. Functions of pointing devices. From the definition, we saw that it is the device that helps us to control the movement of the cursor. So that's our first function there. Controlling the movement of the cursor. Controlling the movement of the cursor. It also helps to send signals to the computer. With the touchpad, as you touch the touchpad, as you touch, as you use your touch screen, as you use the touch screen, it sends signals into the computer. As you touch with your, with your hand, it is sending the signals to the computer for commands to be for commands to be processed. So that's the function of the pointing device there. Then we said it's used to selecting items on the screen. The cursor, as it, as it is moved on the device, as you are moving your pointing device, helps you to select items on the screen. It's not advisable to use your hand to touch the screens if it is not a touch screen. But it is the cursor, it is the mouse or any device that you will move to select an item on the screen. And it's used to also select commands from a menu. If you are using maybe Office application and you click on the Office button, the drop-down menu appears. If you want to select an item on that menu, you use the pointing device. If you right-click an empty space, the context menu will appear. If that menu appears, you use the pointing device to select those commands in the menu. Then you can use the pointing device to also draw your graphs. As we saw with our light pen, with our light pen, if you want to draw the graph to scale or not to scale, you can use it to draw our graphs. So we have the use of the pointing devices. We have it controlling the cursor. We also have it sending command signals into the computer and then selecting items on the screen as well as issuing commands on the command menu. The other pointing, the other commonly used input device is the source data entry device the source data entry device and these devices will create readable data that is on a paper or any media the device the item can be on a paper the item can be on any media whether on a, on an object or on the wall this particular device will convert it into a digital form and it will be transferred into the computer for processing. So there are machine readable data on a magneta, magnetic media that are fed directly into the computer. Examples are scanning devices. We have scanning devices. We also have, we have scanning devices. We have sensors. We have sensors. We have audio input devices. We have voice recognition systems. We also have video input devices, and then we have electronic cameras. All these are examples of scanning. All these are examples of source data entry devices. They are all examples of source data entry devices. So we look at all these devices one after the other. The first one we look at it's the scanning device, the scanning device, and the devices that will scan or it will transfer typed tests, typed tests, handwritten, handwritten tests, or any object, and it will convert it into a digital image. It will convert it into a digital image. When we're looking at the components of data, we said image data can be sent into the computer. 
and it is this scanning device that will convert or scan your device that will scan an information or that will scan a test or that will scan an object and then make it digital make it into a digital image before it is sent into the computer for processing examples of scanning devices we have mac or character recognition devices mac or character recognition devices we also have the image scanners we have image scanners then we have fax machines or faxing machines all these devices will convert a scanned test will convert a printed test will convert a written test or will convert an information on any object and convert it into a digital image for it to be sent into the computer for processing so let's look at the mac character devices first these devices will only sense marks or characters it senses a mark or any character on a paper and then converts it into the digital image for it to be sent into the computer so they are devices that are used to sense marks or characters an example we have micr micr means magnetic ink character recognition magnetic ink character recognition then we also have optical mark recognition optical mark recognition then we have the optical character recognition optical character recognition all these ones will scan images will scan printed text and will scan handwritings on any object and convert it into a digital image so we look first at the, the micr this how the magnetic ink character magnetic ink character recognition looks like it is used to read the numbers that are stored at the bottom of your check to read the numbers that are stored at the bottom of the check to generate information about the owner of the check to generate information about the owner of the check so this device here as it is swiped inside as it is passed through the micr information about the check is displayed on the screen of the devices or on the screen of your monitor for you to know the owner of the check if the check is lost and you are you want to go and cash it out the bank will quickly inform the owner and if the owner approves you are safe but if the owner disagrees and says the check is a lost check then you have to bear the consequence so the micr helps to know the owner of a particular check by scanning the numbers at the bottom of your check we all know every check has a number written at the bottom of the check so the number is passed through the micr then we will know the owner of the check we also have the optical mark character recognition we have the omr the omr as you are seeing on our screen this one it reads all your pencil marks as uh, candidates are writing their bc you wish them the best of luck as they are writing it they will have their shading papers it is this shading papers that will be passed through the optical mark recognition optical mark recognition it is passed through and it converts all the pencil marks it converts all the pencil marks as we said in the definition for the character recognition devices we said they read marks and they read characters so the omr read pencil marks 
and convert them into a digital form or convert them into computer usable form. Convert them into computer usable form. As we said previously, it is a good example. And a, 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 a good example is what? The shading boxes used during BEC. It will convert all the shaded and non-shaded areas and generate a report. And generate a report for you to know which ones are right and which ones are wrong. Which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So the o OMR will scan quickly through the shaded and unshaded boxes in this particular image here. It will shade and it will bring it, it will shade, it will scan and it will bring it out. Or it will scan and it will be displayed on the screen. They are saying as it scans, it will convert it into a computer usable form. Or it will convert it into a digital image. And that's OMR. Now we have the optical character recognition, OCR. OCR2 looks like the image we are seeing there. And it is a technology that enables you to convert different types of documents into an editable form. If you have a Word document you have printed, the OCR can scan it for you so that it will be uh, it will be editable again. It will be editable. When you say editable, it means you can add text to it or you can remove text from it. So the OCR will convert the particular document into an editable data. So we have the three main character recognitions. We have the MIR, we have the OMR, and then we have the OCR. O C R. Let's look at the next source data entry device. We have the image scanner. The image scanner. They are light sensing equipment used to translate. When we're looking at the source data entry, we said it scans images. It scans written text and it scans handwritten text or information on any object into a digital form. So the scanners translate images into digital form. Digital form means a form that the computer can use. A form that the computer can use is the digital form. So image scanners are the are light sensing equipment and it converts images into a digital form. We have four types of image, four types of scanners. We have the handheld scanner. This handheld scanner is a barcode reader. A barcode reader is a handheld scanner. It helps us to know the prices of goods in a supermarket. If you enter the supermarket, after you have finished your purchases and you want to make payment, the handheld scanner is passed through it's passed through the object you have purchased then the price will be shown on the monitor screen for the user to know the prices he or she has to pay so the handheld scanner there is a barcode reader then we have feed in scanners we also have flat bed scanners and then the drum scanners all these scanners serve or they serve their different purposes just by just as their name implies then we have the functions of scanning devices the functions of scanning devices they are used to convert text into digital form from the definition we saw that they convert text they convert pictures and they convert written information on paper and make it into a digital form. So they, you, they are used to convert text into a digital form. When you finish typing your document, you can scan it with a scanning device. Then you can also use to convert pictures into 
a digital image. If you have a hard copy of a picture, but you want that picture transferred to another person, you can scan it into a digital image and then you transfer it to the particular person you want to send it to. So it's used to convert text into digital image and it's used to convert pictures into a digital form. And they're also used to recognize data written on a paper and translate them into a digital format. So if you type a text on a written on a paper, you can use the scanning devices to translate them into a digital format or into a digital image. That's for the scanning devices. Now we look at audio input devices. Audio input devices. Audio or sound. So any device that helps us, that has the ability to send sound signals into the computer is an audio input device. Used to send sound signals to the computer for processing or to carry out commands. Any device that can do that is an audio input device. Then examples include the microphone and the MIDI keyboard. The microphone and the MIDI keyboard. The microphone is a device that converts sound into a signal that can be processed into the computer. This is the point. So when you speak, the microphone will convert that particular information you have said and then convert it into the computer for processing. The raw sound cannot be processed into the computer, but it is the microphone that will convert that sound into a signal that is fed into the computer for processing. Then the MIDI keyboard is also an instrument. MIDI means musical instrument digital interface. Musical instrument digital interface. It is a piano style interface device also for sending audio signals. This is normally used in our studios for our recording sessions. If you want if you are an artist and you, you, you want to write your own songs and make your own beats, you use the MIDI keyboard to generate those sounds. So we look at the function of audio input devices. They convert sound from analog into digital. And then they are used for audio recording. They are used for audio recording. The microphone will convert analog signal into a digital signal, and then the MIDI keyboard will help us in our audio recording. So as the digital, as the MIDI keyboard is giving us our beats to our recording, we can also use the microphone to sing or to make it harmonious. Then we also have another source data entry device known as the image or video input device, image or video input device. These devices help us to record analog image and convert them into digital image. Convert analog images into digital images. Examples of audio, examples of image or video input devices. We have our digital camera. We also have our web camera, and then we have our camcorder. We have our digital camera, digital camera, camcorder, and then our web camera. All these devices are image or video input devices because they help to transform or convert analog images into digital images for the computer to use. And the digital camera records all photographic images. It records and it stores all photographic images in a form that can be fed into the computer. It converts all the images 
that are taken and then it's sent into a form that the computer can use. As, as I said previously, all these images has to be processed before they can be used. And it is these input devices that does that because before they are sent into the computer to be used. So it stores all photographic images into a form that the computer can use. Then we have a camcorder, camcorder or a video, a video camera. It is any device that captures images or that captures videos into a form and convert them into a form the computer can use. The camcorder or the video camera helps us to record our video, our video for presenting. As we are having the class here, it is these video cameras that are capturing what I am sharing with you here. So the video camera or the camcorder, it will convert whatever I'm saying here and, and into a form that the computer can use. Without the video camera, anything I say here cannot be used by the computer. The camcorder or the video camera will convert into a form that the computer can use or that the computer can read. And we have our web camera. The web camera is used to feed live video, live video into a computer. In this era of COVID, as there was a lockdown, all meetings were held online. And it is this web camera that helps us to feed live video from our computers. So you can be in Ghana and have a live video conference with somebody in England because of the web camera. It enables two people to see themselves over the internet. It doesn't have to be a physical meeting. You can be here, I can be in another place, and we will have a live video feed because of the web camera. So the web camera feeds live video into the computer live video into the computer. So we have our, our digital camera to store photographic images. We have our camcorder to store or to capture moving images or videos. And we have the web camera to feed live video into the computer. Then we also have the functions of the image or video input devices functions of the image or video input devices. The first one we saw is the digital camera, which is used to capture and convert pictures into digital forms. To capture pictures into a digital form, you will use the digital camera. Then if you want to record videos that can be entered for processing, we use the camcorder or we use the video camera, the video camera. That one too is a function of image or video input device. Then we also have used to capture live videos. That will be for that will be for the webcam or the web camera to capture live video which helps in our calls and which help in our conferencing. As I said, you can have a live conference with your group of friends or group of colleagues in an, any place because of the web camera attached. Another source data entry is our sensors. Our sensors. The commonly used sensor we have now is our infrared thermometer guns. Infrared thermometer guns which will just capture or collect a specific kind of data directly from the environment and transmit it into, a, into the computer. If the sensor or the image or the input or the infrared thermometer gun, it just 
captures or it collects your temperature as it is placed or as it is shot on your forehead. It collects that data directly from the environment. This part, this environment being the human being, it collects that particular information directly from the human being and transmits them into the device or into its screen. So you realize that as before you enter any organization or you enter any place, the thermometer gun is placed or is shot on your forehead to ascertain your data, to ascertain your temperature. That's the sensor. That's our sensor there. So as you can see on the screen here, the green portion of this sensor is displaying the results. So as it is shot, the signals are read from the front onto the forehead of the human being. And then the data that is captured is displayed on the screen by the device. So that's the sensor to collect specific data directly from the environment. Then we have biometric system. Biometric system is a verification. It's a, it's a means by which a person can be uniquely identified. Uniquely identified. As we are in the election year, we have been asked to produce our voters' ID. It is this biometric system that is giving us our unique identity. That is giving us our unique feature. This, and that is distinguishing us from other biological traits. It scans our fingernails and it scans our thumbs. It will scan your left finger, it will scan your right finger, and it will scan your thumb. Then your identity is, it is displayed on the screen for manipulation. So the common one we have is our voters it's for it's the one we use for our voter voter ID cards. And some of the functions of the biometric system, it's help us to ensure that our data conforms with standard classification. It also also ensures validity of our data. Apart from scanning our fingernails, it can also scan our eyes. We have biometric system that scans your eyes and gives you access to a particular place or access to a particular office. That's the biometric system. And it's used to ensure integrity and internal consistency. Integrity and internal consistency. Then it's also used to secure and maintain our primary data. All these are uses or functions of the biometric system. It also allows easy access to primary data easy access to primary data as you have used it for your cards and there is a missing or your card is misplaced you can use the you can go to the office and it will be retrieved for you once they are able to scan your biometric data again and it's used to process data efficiently used to process data efficiently so that's the that's for the biometric system helps you to a, a verification is a, a, a means by which a person can be uniquely identified uniquely identified and we saw examples of image devices or image recognition devices and we saw the MIR MICR magnetic ink character recognition has the ability to display the information of a particular bank check owner by scanning the numbers at the bottom of the check. We also saw the OMR as the device that helps to convert information on our shaded boxes on our BEC paper and then gives a report as to which one is right or wrong. Then we saw the O, optical character recognition. 
page has the ability to edit, to make all your scanned images editable. When you say editable, you can add more text, you can remove text from it. And then we saw image scanners as any, any device that has a light sensor. And it is this light sensor that translates images into a digital form. And we saw their types as well. We saw the handheld scanner. We saw the handheld scanner is a barcode reader and the other types of scanner. Then we saw the audio input devices as the devices that convert analog sound into a digital into digital signals for processing and for recording. Then we saw examples of these audio input devices as the microphone and the keyboard. We also saw the image or video input devices. We have the digital camera to capture photographic images. We also have the web camera to, to feed live information into the computer. We have the digital camera to record and store photographic images. We also saw the web camera used to feed live video into the computer. And we saw camcorder also helping us to capture moving images. We also saw our sensors. Our sensors as the devices that helps us to collect a specific kind of data from the environment. And so the commonly used one now is our infrared thermometer gun. Then we also saw the biometric system which helps to collect uniquely a unique information from a particular person. My name is Colin Shemesa. This is how we will end our lesson today. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Have a nice week. Goodbye. <music>